I uh, travel a lot across the globe and I raise support for binding agreements on climate and energy. And I see a growing demand for Danish sustainable solutions. But I also see how all uh, other countries, how all countries pursue our leading market position. We're not out there alone. In Turkey last month, I saw the production of oil out of chicken droppings. This would actually have particular relevance for you, Martin. Yeah. Um, they use the chicken droppings for biofuel and, uh, and a range of other products, actually. It's quite interesting. I'm glad that we are working on the same things at full speed, because there's this new kind of alchemy that offers us a way out of the mess we've made with our fossil fuels. Uh, and it offers us a whole new array of green alternatives to our daily consumers. And it offers us yet another opportunity to create jobs and grow our economy. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be invited here. Thank you for that. And I'm hoping to set the scene of this important topic, bioeconomy and growth. We are facing challenges. It's challenges on a global scale involving issues as climate change and resource scarcity, population pressure, and a growing demand for food and feed and fiber. These challenges requires us to become more sustainable and do things smarter. If we want to avoid the worst case scenarios that the IPCC presented here in Copenhagen a couple of weeks ago. But with the challenge comes new opportunities and the bioeconomy is one of the opportunities that we cannot afford to miss. I'm pretty convinced that we won't miss this challenge. Danish agriculture has become very efficient and adaptive. And I recognize fully what you said about how agriculture has transformed almost beyond recognition just in the generation and probably will do again during the next generation. On the other hand, we must face the fact that agriculture hasn't been able to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases as quickly as other sectors. And by 2020, agriculture is likely to rise from 21 percentage point to 27 percentage point of our national emissions. In this bioeconomy, however, Danish agriculture has an excellent opportunity to take on a leading role in the green transition. And if farmers can deliver these sustainable uh, substitutions, we won't have to import them. Instead, we may be able to export them. If farmers make this heroic effort, here's the chance for a round of applause from an unusual crowd. If you succeed, I guarantee a lot of new fans and friends. To me, the essence of bioeconomy is the strive for a smarter and more resource efficient and sustainable way of creating economic growth by the innovative use of biological resources. Recently, the EU leaders agreed on what I must say is an ambitious climate and energy framework for 2030. The goals are set and now we need to come up with the right solutions. The bioeconomy can deliver some of these. Basically, we must make sure to recycle before we throw away. We must make sure we eat the grain before we burn the straw. We must make sure we extract the sugar before the beet turns to feed. How can we take the next step towards using our resources smarter and boost this bioeconomy? I believe we need to start focusing on three important aspects. And first, we need innovation. We're simply still not where we need to be. New technologies that will allow us to use our resources more efficiently in order to create high-value bio-based products. Our scientists and industry have an important role in developing new and cost-effective biorefineries. Second, government should encourage the sustainable use of biomass. So we need to create the market there. We cannot enjoy this new lifestyle at the expense of starving people or endangered animals. We can't chop down a tree without noticing who's sitting in it. And we can't rip up crops that should have fed the hungry. So we simply need sustainable biomass. And third, we need cooperation between universities and NGOs, and government, industry, civil society. We need to find new ways of working together. It's important if we want to bridge the fields of energy and agriculture and environment. The benefits are obvious, and they should be clear to us all. The growth opportunities for the bioeconomy are widely recognized as being substantial. In Denmark, in Europe, there is a great market potential for new bio-based products. Both biomass producers and industry could benefit if we succeed in boosting con consumer demand for new bio-based products. This will also create new jobs across the entire value chain, which is quite uh, long. During my recent visit to Turkey, I had the opportunity to fly across the Bosporus in a helicopter, and on both sides of the strait, 
there were hundreds of wind turbines and they had names on them. And they said Vestas and some of them and Siemens and some of them. And it made me proud because um, it made me feel at home. I have pretty much the same when I see a mask container in a harbor or I lean back in a conference room in a chair by one of the Danish designers. But it may be a little harder to write made in Denmark on biofuels or plastic components and cosmetic ingredients. It won't be that visible. But if we succeed in creating a sustainable bioeconomy, which I am sure we will, and even make it into a new business adventure, I will be very proud on your behalf. <coughs> I'd like to encourage you to keep up the good work, obviously, because we need the smart, sustainable solutions, and we need them soon. This will be beneficial to all, but this will also be necessary for us to reach our objectives in, uh, in, in the great climate question. So let's work together, and let's unlock the great growth potential, and let's create tomorrow's bioeconomy. Thank you very much. <laughs>